today we will be covering Bernoulli's differential equation. At the end of this presentation, we should be able to identify if a first order differential equation is Bernoulli's equation or not. And the student should be able to find the general or the particular solution of the differential equation by using the methods of the Bernoulli's differential equation. So to start with, so let's go back with the definition of the Bernoulli's differential equation. A Bernoulli's equation is a nonlinear and of order 1 in the dependent variable y and has the form dy over dx plus p of xy is equals to q of xy raised to n. In Bernoulli's equation, so for us to use the method for the Bernoulli's equation, so we could easily identify the differential equation as a nonlinear. So if it is nonlinear, therefore, that could be considered as a Bernoulli's equation. In this case, given on the standard format of the equation, so there is a dependent variable, so which is raised to n uh, other than 1. So therefore, that would be considered as a Bernoulli's equation. And at the same time, uh, this one should be of order 1 as well in such a way that the differential dy over dx so which has an or which should have an order which is equivalent to 1 the idea of the bernoulli's differential equation can be related to the linear differential equation as you can see on the standard format dy over dx plus px y is equals to q of x y raised to n so it can be seen here that it resembles the standard form of a linear differential equation the only difference is the introduction of the y raised to n removing that y raised to n so that is already a linear differential equation so the idea behind the bernoulli's differential equation is to transform it into a linear differential equation so that is why we have different steps on how to do or on how to follow or what to do in solving a Bernoulli's differential equation. So our first uh, step is to make sure that our differential equation is on the standard form of the Bernoulli's differential equation. And that is dy over dx plus p of x times y is equals to q of x raised uh, times uh, y raised to n. So as I have mentioned, so the only difference with linear is it involves the y raised to n there. So that is why our next, uh, next task is to uh, divide everything by y raised to n. So in this case, uh, dividing it by y raised to n, so it will introduce y raised to negative n, so which is multiplied with the differential dy over dx. And then, so we'll just have a y raised to 1 minus n times p of x equals to q of x on the remaining part of the equation. So once we're able to divide it by y raised to n, so leaving our q of x alone on the right hand side of the given equation. So once we are done, since uh, we were able to remove the uh, parameter which is multiplied with the q of x, however, it our differential equation is no longer linear in y or on the dependent variable because of the introduction of the y raised to 1 minus n. So to make it linear again, so we are going to substitute. So the one that we will be substituting is always the variable multiplied it with our p of x. So in this case, so we're going to introduce a new variable, which is v, and then that would be equal to y raised to 1 minus n. And afterwards, so we're just going to derive it. And once uh, derived, so we will be substituting it on the given original equation. So which will introduce a numerical coefficient on our differential dv over dx. So we need to remove that as well again. So for us to make sure that it will become a linear equation in the standard form. So doing that, so we're going to multiply everything. So in this case going to multiply everything with the inverse of the constant so which is 1 minus n and doing so so we'll yield to dv over dx plus 1 minus n times p of x v is equals to 1 minus n times q of x so as you can see here it became it became a linear equation so this time instead of y this is linear in v and then the whole of this so becomes our new p of x and then the other one, so would still be our q 
q of x. And therefore, that would be a linear differential equation. So our last step then is we're just going to solve the transformed equation using the method of linear equation. So once we solve it, so we're just going to transform it back to the original dependent variable from v, transform it back to y. So those are the steps in finding the solution of the first order differential equation. So just to recall, it's S, D, S, S. So we have to transform it on the standard form. The second one is we're going to divide it by y raised to n. And then we're going to substitute to make it linear equation. So that is for the S. And lastly, we're going to solve it using the method of linear equation. So to further understand the uh, steps or the methods in finding the solution using Bernoulli's equation. So let's proceed with our example. Let us now have example number one, so which is to find the general solution of the given differential equation dy over dx minus 5y is equals to negative 5 all over 2 xy cubed. So looking at the given differential equation, it appears that it is already on the standard form. So we have y on the left-hand side of the equation and the y raised to n, which is equal to y raised to 3 on the right-hand side of the equation. So in this case, so we're just going to skip the first step, so which is to transform it on the standard form since it is already on the standard form. So the second step is we're going to divide the equation by y raised to n. In this case, dividing it by y raised to n, or I'm just going to multiply it by y raised to negative 3. So this will give us y raised to negative 3, then dy all over dx minus 5, y raised to 1 minus 3, we'll have y minus negative 2 is equals to negative 5 all over 2, then multiplied it with x. So removing the y raised to 3. And then from there, so we'll have uh, this format and we could proceed on our third step. And on our third step, so we are going to make this one linear since we have y raised to negative 2 on this given part. So to do that, so we're going to let v to be equal to y raised to negative 2. So afterwards, so we're just going to derive. So dv would be equal to negative 2 y raised to negative 2 minus 1. So we'll have negative 3 dy. And since we are going to substitute this one, I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So I'll have negative 2 there, so yielding to y raised to negative 3 dy. So y raised to negative 3 dy is the same as this, y raised to negative 3 dy. So therefore, so we can substitute our formula, negative 2 over 2 dx, negative dv over 2 dx, and then minus 5, our y minus or y raised to negative 2 that is equal to v, and that is equal to negative 5 all over 2 times x. And then in our linear differential equation, so it's already linear in V. However, there is an attached numerical coefficient on dv over dx. So we will be multiplying everything by negative 2. So yielding to dv over dx and then plus 10v is equals to positive 5x and giving us the p of x to be equivalent to 10 and then our q of x to be equivalent to 5x. So from there, so we can now proceed with our solution for our uh, differential equation. So since this is already a linear differential equation, so we need to find first our integrating factor. So our integrating factor mu of x, the formula is e raised to p of x dx. And our p of x is 10 dx. So therefore, our integrating factor is e raised to 
10x. And then, so we could use our formula in finding the solution of a linear differential equation. So that is mu of x multiplied it with v is equals to the integral of q of x multiplied with mu of x dx. So giving us our mu of x to be e raised to 10x and then our v. So v from our step number 3, it's y raised to negative 2. So y raised to negative 2 is equals to the q of x is 5x. And then the mu of x is e raised to 10x dx. And from here, so we could uh, resolve this one. So 5x e raised to 10x dx is the same as the, uh, or we could resolve this one using methods of uh, by parts. Okay, so by parts. However, it involves an algebraic function, so multiplied with an exponential function. So instead of by parts, we could use tabular method, so which is the easier one. So we could have 5x on the left side and then e raised to 10x dx on the right side. So again, what we'll be doing is we're going to derive 5x into 5 and then 0. Then integrate e raised to 10x dx, that would be 1 over 10 e raised to 10x. Then integrate it further, so giving us 1 over 100 e raised to 10x. And thus, we'll have the, uh, this one would become positive, this one would become negative. Then writing our solution then would be e raised to 10x, uh, I'll do it as y over or y squared, is equal to uh, 5 over 10 is 1 half, so 1 half x e raised to 10x. And then minus 5 over 100 is 1 over 20 e raised to 10x, and then plus c. So if we want this one, or we could simplify this one by multiplying everything by 20 y squared. So that would give us 20 e raised to 10x is equals to uh, 10x y squared e raised to 10x minus y squared e raised to 10x plus c y squared. So for our final general solution. So that is 20 e raised to 10x is equals to 10x y squared e raised to 10x minus y squared e raised to 10x plus c y squared. So you may write it on a different format, but this will do already. So let's proceed with our next example. So for our next example, we have find the general solution of the given differential equation. So given that we have 3 times 1 plus t squared dy over dt is equals to 2ty y cubed minus 1. So for our first step, this one is not on the standard form of a Bernoulli's differential equation. So we have to transform it in such way. So to do that, so we will be multiplying everything by the inverse of 3, 1 plus t squared. So as to leave dy over dt alone. So without any coefficient of it. So giving us to d, uh, sorry, dy. dy over dt and then that is equals to 2ty y cubed minus 1 all over 3 times 1 plus t squared and again as you can see on the given differential equation there are two terms on the numerator the y cubed and the negative 1 so we could separate those terms so by distributing 2ty first. So dy over dt is equal to 2t 
y to the fourth minus 2ty all over 3 times 1 plus t squared. So separating the two, so that would give us dy over dt is equals to 2t y to the fourth all over 3 times 1 plus t squared minus 2ty all over 3 times 1 plus t squared. So to make it on the standard form finally, so dy over dt transpose that negative 2ty, so it will become plus 2ty all over 3 times 1 plus t squared is equals to 2ty to the fourth all over 3 times 1 plus t squared. So this is already on the standard form. So we have y here and then we have y to the fourth on the right hand side. So as our y raised to n. So we can now proceed with our second step that is to divide the equation by y raised to n. In this case, so instead of dividing, so I'm just going to multiply everything by y raised to negative 4. So yielding to y raised to negative 4 dy over dt. And then plus 2ty, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, all over 3 times 1 plus t squared. It's equals to 2t, all over 3 times 1 plus t squared. And from there, so we can now proceed to our third step. So, which is to make it a linear equation. So, by substituting V is equals to Y raised to this one. So, Y raised to negative 3. So, DV then is equals to negative 3, Y raised to negative 4, DY. And we'll have negative DV all over 3 is equals to Y raised to negative 4, DY. So, substitute it. Uh, yielding to negative dv over 3 dt, then plus 2t all over 3 times 1 plus t squared. So y negative 3 becomes v is equals to 2t all over 3 times 1 plus t squared. Again, so we have to remove the coefficient of our differential. So, yielding to dv over dt minus, so 3 and 3 would cancel out. So, we just have 2t all over 1 plus t squared v is equals to negative 2t all over 1 plus t squared. So, giving us the p of t to be equivalent to negative 2t all over 1 plus t squared. Our q of t is the same. So negative 2t all over 1 plus t squared. So proceed to step number 4. So we are going to solve the differential equation using methods of linear equation. So to do that, again, the first step is to find our integrating factor mu of t. That is e raised to the p of t negative 2t all over 1 plus t squared dt. So remember that our u here is 1 plus t squared. Our du is 2t dt, so which is the one on our numerator, except that in excess of negative. So therefore, that would be a natural logarithm. So e raised to negative ln of uh, 1 plus t squared. Or... So applying the properties of logarithm, so this is the same as 1 over 1 plus t squared as our mu of t. Excuse me. For our uh, solution, mu of t then, so multiply it with v is equals to the integral of q of t, mu of t, dt. Mu of t is 1 over 1 plus t squared. Our v, so using a step 3, so it's y negative 3. So y negative 3 is equals to our q of t. 
is negative 2t all over 1 plus t squared. And then our q of t is, or mu of t, is 1 over 1 plus t squared as well, dt. Okay, so this is the same as 1 over y cubed times 1 plus t squared is equal to. I could rewrite this one as 1 plus t squared, so it could be combined on the other one, so giving us a raised to 2. However, since I'm thinking that this should be a resolvable using power formula, so we could raise it up. So that would give us 1 plus t squared raised to negative 2. And then we'll have the, I'll just move out the negative there, and then I'll have 2t dt. So similarly, so our u is 1 plus t squared, our du is 2t dt, so which resembles the one on the right-hand side of the integral. And therefore, so 1 over y cubed 1 plus t squared is then equal to Integral of that would be negative 1 plus t squared. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Then divide it with negative 1 plus c. So yielding to 1 over y cubed, 1 plus t squared is equal to 1 plus t squared plus c. And multiplying everything by y cubed, 1 plus t squared. So yielding our final answer to be 1 is equals to y cubed plus c y cubed 1 plus t squared. So for our final answer, 1 is equals to y cubed plus c y cubed 1 plus t squared. And Let's proceed with our next example. So for our next example, this is already an IVP, an initial value problem, that when x is equals to 0, so y is equals to 4. However, on the given differential equation, so it has, or we have y raised to 1 half, dy over dx plus y raised to 3 halves is equal to 1. It's not on the standard form of a Bernoulli's differential equation. So since we don't have a y, which is linear, and then a y raised to n. However, this one is a Bernoulli's differential equation. So since it actually skipped the first two steps, okay? So as you can see here, that y raised to uh, 1 half is already multiplied uh, with our dy over dx. So it already skips actually two steps. So the first two steps were already skipped. So proceeding to the third step. So on the third step, so we're going to let the value of v to be equivalent to y raised to 3 over 2. And then uh, dv would be equal to 3 over 2. y raised to 3 over 2 minus 1 is 1 half. Then dy. So dividing both sides by 3 over 2, so that will yield to 2 thirds of dv is equals to y raised to 1 half dy. And from there, so we could substitute that y 1 half dy is equivalent to 2 thirds of dv over dx. And then y raised to 3 over 2 is v plus v is equals to 1. And again, so we want to remove the numerical coefficient, so multiply everything by 3 over 2. So giving us dv over dx plus 3 over 2v and plus 3 over 2. So giving us a linear differential equation whose p of x is 3 over 2 and q of x is 3 over 2 as well. So leading us to our fourth step right away. 
uh, where integrating factor mu of x is equal to e raised to the integral of 3 over 2 x or sorry dx that would be equal to e raised to 3 over 2 x for our integrating factor so mu of t sorry mu of x mu of x is equal to or mu of x multiplied it with v is equals to the integral of q of x mu of x dx so mu of x is e raised to 3 over 2x and then our v is y raised to 3 over 2 y raised to 3 over 2 is equal to q of x which is 3 over 2 mu of x is e raised to 3 over 2x dx so our mu here is 3 over 2x our du is 3 over 2 dx which is exactly as that so therefore e raised to 3 over 2x y raised to 3 over 2 is equal to uh, e raised to 3 over 2x plus c so if you want to remove the e raised to 3 over 2x so e raised to or sorry uh, so this is an ivp so we won't simplify it yet <clears throat> so we're going to substitute that when when what when x is equals to zero so y is equals to 4. So e raised to 3 over 2, x is 0, and then y is 4. So 4 raised to 3 over 2 is equals to e raised to 3 over 2 times 0 plus c. So this is 1, this is 1, this is 1 as well. So 4, square root of 4 is 2, 2 raised to 3 is 8, so 8 times 1 is 8, so equals to 1 plus C. So 8 minus 1 is 7, so therefore C is equals to 7. So from there, so we could have E raised to 3 over 2X, Y raised to 3 over 2, so equals to E raised to 3 over 2X plus 7. Then if we want to... Multiply everything by e raised to negative 3 over 2x. So this will leave us to y raised to 3 over 2 is equals to 1 plus 7 e raised to negative 3 over 2x. And that would be our final particular solution. That when x is equal to 0 and y is equals to 4, the answer to the given differential equation would be y raised to 3 over 2 is equal to 1 plus 7e raised to negative 3 over 2x. So that will be our third example. So let's proceed with our last uh, final example. So for this given topic, so we have y prime is equals to 5y plus e raised to negative 2x, y raised to negative 2. So for our y prime, for our first step, it's not on the standard form, so we have to transform it. So y prime minus 5y is equals to e raised to negative 2x, y raised to negative 2. So again, it is an initial value problem that when x is equals to 0, y is equals to 2. So therefore, this one... So we could rewrite this as dy over dx minus 5y is equals to e raised to negative 2x, y raised to negative 2. And then from there, uh, we could have the second step. So in our second step, so we have to divide everything, <coughs> excuse me, by y raised to negative 2. In this case, we will be multiplying it by y squared. So y squared 
dy over dx minus 5y cubed is equals to e raised to negative 2x. So for our second step. For our third step, so we're going to let again as the value of b to be equivalent to y cubed. So dv then would be equivalent to 3y squared dy. Or dv over 3 then is equals to y squared dy. Substituting this one to the equation on step 2. So yielding to 1 third dv over dx minus 5b is equals to e raised to negative 2x. And then multiplying everything by 3. So giving us dv over dx minus 15b is equals to 3 e raised to negative 2x. So giving us the p of x to be equivalent to negative 15 and then our q of x to be equivalent to 3 e negative 2x. Okay. So let's proceed with our last step, so which is the fourth step. The mu of x then would be equivalent to e raised to the integral of negative 15 dx, or simply the new integrating factor will be negative 15x. So our general formula is mu of x times v is equals to the integral of q of x mu of x dx. So mu of x is e raised to negative 15x. Our v is y cubed. And then the q of x is 3 e raised to negative 2x. Mu of x is e raised to negative 15x dx. e raised to negative 15x times y cubed then would be equal to 3 the integral of e raised to negative 17x plus c. So giving us e raised to negative 15x times y cubed is equals to negative 3 over 17 e raised to negative 17x plus c. So to be our general solution. However, again, it is an IVP. So when x is 0, y is 2. So when x is 0, so y is equals to 2. So e raised to negative 15 times 0, then y is mm, 2. So 2 raised to 3 is equals to negative 3 over 17. e raised to negative 17 times 0 plus c. So this is 1. This is 1 as well. So giving us 8 is equals to negative 13 over 17. Oh, sorry, negative 3, not 7. Negative 3 plus C. So yielding us to 8 plus 3 over 17 is equals to C. So C then is equals to... 8 times 17 is 136 plus 3 is 139 over 17. So substituting the C, E raised to negative 15X, Y cubed is equals to negative 3 over 17, E raised to negative 17X plus 139 all over 17. And then multiplying everything by 17 and e raised to positive 15x. So giving us 17 y cubed is equals to negative 3 e raised to negative 2x. And then plus 139 e raised to 15x. Okay. So that would be our final particular solution. That that would be 17y cubed equals to negative 3 e raised to negative 2x plus 139 e raised to 15x. So that's all for the 
nonlinear or for the Bernoulli's differential equation. Thank you.